Hello, it's Beach Cam's man and Jack from BAM, and in this video, we take our first look at phase four from Lee Mount. Jack shows us the different cliff behavioral units or CBUs. we see how close the Bamnuttle team are working above the live railway line. This is phase four of Network Rail Southwest Rail Resilience Programme. It's all part of a government funded programme of ongoing work on the line between Dawlish and Tynmouth, helping to reduce disruption for passengers by affording the railway a better protection from the cliffs and sea. So we're just having a wind up to phase four now. Um, we are, we've put this all road in, we're on the top of Lee Mount at the moment. Yeah. Um, so this is where the, the benches used to be. Yeah, um, which will all get reinstated right. on completion. Picnic benches and that's it. And this is just a hall road that we've built into the park to allow us to undertake our work. So the, the blue line and the, the other line that you can see down there are lines to feed the compressors, uh, uh, compressor lines and water lines um, to go down, oh, grout lines, sorry, to go down into CBU 26 where they're doing some drilling work. So okay, so all, all this is closed now, isn't it, to the public down to... It is, yeah. Um, the reason that we have to close this section is because of the lines that we have to run through here. Yeah. And also the, the, the bit of a road that we've got going down into here to get our materials into the work area. Okay. So this is CBU 26, which is the furthest cliff unit. Yeah. A, a cliff behavioural unit as you go along back into Dawlish. Um, in total, there's nine CBUs to do. Yeah. Um, so the guys, as we're going down here now, they're installing the temporary um, anchors which support the rigs which we'll be putting onto the face of the slope. Uh -huh. So I can show you a bit more of the rigs in the two work areas that we're working in with the rigs a bit later. Yeah. Um, again, the footpaths have to, have to maintain closed down here just because we're running materials up and down here and we've got members of the public, uh, and we've got an open section of fence down here where we've got rope access teams okay. that are going to be working yeah. on the edge shortly. So we've taken all, taken all the vegetation out of this section because it was quite densely vegetated very, through yeah, this good. area. Um, and on the left hand side here, we're drilling our temporary anchors to support the rigs, like I say. And directly below where we're stood now is where we're going to be undertaking the drilling works on the cliff face. So the extent of the drilling works here basically go just towards the edge of the tree and back down in line on the cliff face with where the bridge finishes down there. Yeah. So the guys are up here at the minute with the term ag rig. Uh, they're just dropping the, the, sack of, uh, the, the temporary bars into place and they grout those in position. And then that's what they'll be using to, to hang the, the, the wire ropes off which support the rigs on the face of the slope. Yeah. So they're only using a small term ag rig there, which is basically like a handheld drill, which Richards have made a, a kind of a, a system up to allow you not to use it by hand okay. and on a, a kind of chain system on the, oh, back wow, of a, okay. on the back of a rig system there. So you can see where, where they've kind of adapted the, the handheld rig into, yeah. into um, machine. a machined rig now, yeah. yeah. So, it, so it reduces halves and vibration to the, to the operatives that are using it. So they install these anchors every, every metre or so. Uh -huh. um, and then as the rigs are working their way along the slope, they will transition through the anchors. So basically use, they, they use what's called a turf, they use a turf to pull the rig from one, one location to another. So there's the bars that they're dropping in, yeah. and uh, the blue line that you can see behind us, that'll be filled with grout, um, and they, they grout the anchors in, and then we have to stress and pull the anchors to make sure they can take the weight of the rig then, before we load the anchors into position. What we're doing as well, we're keeping our grout and operations and our grout plant in one area, because it saves setting up multiple grout plants in multiple locations. The same with the compressor lines as well. That's why we run compressor lines out and keep the compressors in one place, yeah. to save having multiple setups in different locations and to be honest we haven't really got the room down here to set up materials like that. No, no. So to separate the hall road, similar to what we've done in all the, um, with all the other hall roads across the rest of the CBUs, we put a layer of Taram down first and then we put the compacted type one on top of the Taram then. Yeah. So the park actually is still open to the public. Okay. So you access in from the top side of the park. Yeah. And you can come in and still use the, the oh, park. So can you still use this section? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. you can still use all of this on the left-hand side and right-hand side. We've got a little cross in here that we've put in place. Okay. 
to allow the park people to come back into the yeah. park. And then it just keeps us in our work zone. Yeah. Um, completely segregated away from the public then. So the cliff face that we're stood above now is CBU 25. And CBU 25, um, we could go, we can go over to here. The guys have set the system up to allow us to go up to the rope there. So if you go beyond there, you need your rope access equipment because you're yeah. X amount of meters from the crest. That's Carrington Cove down there, yeah? Yeah. Um, and this section around, that wraps right the way around, uh, is CBU 25. So we have been undertaking de-vegging this area um, over the last probably month and a half yeah. on Saturday night possessions and taking the trees off the cliff face to allow us to install the nails and the netting in this area. Yeah. And we're not actually putting erosion matting in this area because it's part of the triple SI. So what's protected in this area uh, through Natural England is the cliff face itself and the okay. geology of the cliff face. Yeah. So they come back to do regular inspections and what they didn't want is the red rock being hidden. Yeah. So in this area here, there's only a very thin gauge stainless steel mesh okay. going on to here. Okay, it's so you not, can still see the red rock. Yeah, yeah, it's not a solid erosion mat and you'll still be able to see the red rock. Okay. Because um, I know a, a few members of the public were concerned with CBU 26 when you'd look at it, you'd see like a black hard surface. Yeah. You won't, that, no, you, no. you'll, you'll okay. see the red rock once, once yeah. we've finished again. We do have to put temporary matting in here while we're undertaking the work. And uh -huh. that's, that's in case when we're drilling and moving the rigs around the slope, any debris falls off and it's contained within the netting then. Yeah. If we didn't have the, the, the temporary netting in place, it would simply bounce down the cliff. It would have the potential to fall onto the, the so open the railway. Yeah. 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 Okay. So all of the drilling works in this area will be undertaken while trains are still running, the yeah. same as the other areas. We put the, 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 one of the first collection measures is the, the actual netting, the, the temporary netting, netting which goes onto the cliff face itself. Okay. You've got a secondary measure, which is like a catchment net, which goes under the rig. Yeah. Every rig that works on the face has one in case any, any debris falls out or any yep. tools are dropped, but tools are always tethered by the operatives which are working on okay. there anyway. And the same with materials. Um, and then where we are within three metres of um, a horizontal distance from the railway, so we, we might necessarily be like 12 metres above, but we might be three metres off the railway, yep. we put what's called a temporary catch fence in place. Okay. And that go, sits above, so if any materials do somehow manage to escape those two Th those first yeah. two measures, we've got a third control oh, okay. measure in place right. again then. So, yeah, it definitely won't land on the railway then. No, no, <laughs> no. Um, so, this section through here has been de-vegged. Um, the, the, when the new fencing goes back up, um, we, the, the new fencing will go back just up inside where these the, the nails are that you can see here. Yeah. These nails that have been installed, they're only temporary anchors. Again, they're not permanent nails. No. Um, that's just, again, just for supporting the rig while it's working on the face of the slope. Okay. Um, and then that's about it from up here, really. Brilliant. We're planning on uh, everything else that you can see behind us. Nothing else is getting touched in the park here. Um, obviously, prior to us undertaking any of these works, we had to gain assent from Natural England. Yeah. Um, and we do. We are um, undertaking a biodiversity net gain calculator with um, ADAS, our ecologist at the moment. So prior to us undertaking any de-veg, we always have an ecologist come out on a Friday before the Saturday night possession and check the area that we're de-vegging okay. for, for any wildlife and things like that. Oh, that's good. And prior to undertaking any work whatsoever, we do what's called a stage one ecology survey. Yeah. So it, it tells you the, what the potential presence are of different species yeah. in, in the different um, habitats and different locations that we're working in throughout yeah. the cliffs. So we are also working over in Cliff Behavioural Unit 20 and yeah. Cliff Behavioural Unit 21. Uh, 21 is above Shell Cove Beach, yeah. um, which isn't a very public, publicly accessible beach. No. Nope. Um, and CBU 20 is just at the bottom of our compound area where you can see the road network going down to the, the bottom of the cliffs. Yeah. So, so far in CBU 20, we've got three rigs, rigs working in there. We've installed all of the temporary netting, uh -huh. uh, which I was just discussing above CBU 25 then, which is to contain any rocks or any debris that does fall from the cliff face itself while we're moving the rigs and moving people around the cliffs. Yeah. Uh, and we've also installed the temporary catch fence up to a point where we're more than three metres of, uh, from the railway. So I think in that area we've installed about 70 metres of temporary catch fence, which is the blue netting, yeah. which you can see stuck out of the cliff face. Okay. Um, and that, that's a, 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 another collection measure. Yeah. Um, and then in CBU 21, uh, we've put the whole road in about halfway across the top of the CBU because we're still um, arranging land access uh, for, for the next section. Uh-huh. 
We've started nailing in there with another rig as well. Okay. In CBU 20, I think we're up to about 160 or 170 nails. Uh, and in CBU 20, I think we've installed about 30 nails to date. We are also working every other weekend on possessions with our RVs, installing nails below that temporary catch fence. So where the blue netting is, we can't actually put rigs we need face rigs in that area, okay. so everything has to be drilled by a machine from the railway, uh, from the railway line on a Saturday night possession. Okay, brilliant. Right, Jack, so thank you for another very informative video. You're if welcome. you like this video, give it a like and a share. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to our channel. Thanks, Thanks for watching.